let's let's have a quick introduction. Uh, my name's David Pollock. It all started out where I just was around famous people and my father, because of my father, he had a relationship with somebody named Perry Como, who was like a big crooner, like a Frank Sinatra. So, you know, I got a picture with him and mm -hmm. they took me to see him and he autographed the tour book and mm -hmm. you don't really think about it. I liked being in that kind of limelight around yeah. somebody famous and then when I started going to concerts, I just, you know, immersed myself in it. Like I had this mm -hmm. passion, like I wanted something that says I was there but not a tour shirt or even though I got yeah. a lot of tour shirts. Yep. But it was the set list and then the guitar pick and the drumstick, the pictures and it all, you know, it, 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 it all amorphed, if that's the word, into mm -hmm. this collection of, you know, what more can I get? Mm -hmm. And then I just started to amass this collection and then like once I bought a uh, the Smash Nikki Six guitar from Motley Crue, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I want to start collecting guitars, and that's how where all the guitars came. Your autograph drum head. Yeah. That with that I got it in, uh, in an auction or something. You know, I buy shit if they're cheap. You know, and if they look real to me, but you really never know. You know, if you're gonna force something, you're good at what you do. So this is the door. <laughs> <laughs> so I then just threw the skin row stuff on there because I thought it kind of made it look. <laughs> oh this is basically... God. Holy shit. <laughs> this is basically the room. Gotcha. And it started out with drumsticks. It seems like a logical set, conclusion. You know? it, it started out with drumsticks, set lists, and picks. Wow. And like, these are all my first picks and drumsticks, I think. I know mm. they're the first drumsticks. Now, are, um, are these guitars with drumsticks, are those from the, the same shows? Yeah, most of them. Sometimes some things get moved around and I, I mess it up and if I can't recognize the name. But most of them, I need to put stuff on here to identify them. Because I can't remember, if there's not something that tells me that this is America, then sometimes I'm, I forget. So this was a gift. This is Sh Julian Lennon. Hmm. And then I went and got, that's Julian Lennon. This is sticks. This was supposedly stage played, but I don't have proof. I have a certificate, but anybody can make those. But it was from mm -hmm. a reliable, the electric factory auction we used to have in Philadelphia every year gotcha. for a cancer foundation. Mm -hmm. So it's a real, they're not, I don't think they're going to give you fake yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then I've seen sticks so many times. I got different, I throw different stuff on there. Like they pulled up. This is Sticks. They pulled up my wife on stage to sing a song with him in Atlantic City. Billy Squire, the Goo Goo Dolls. This is my first wife's. Most of this is her. her was her, you know, the Goo Goo Dolls, yeah. Bon Jovi, and Billy Squire were her favorites. So I took her to meet Billy Squire. So I got this at an auction, mm -hmm. and at the Electric Factory auction. And then took it to, and then I got her, I, I paid off her, his manager, mm. so she could have a private meet and greet <laughs> with him. And it was at BB King's in New York, and then we took this and he signed for Andrea. So he put her name there on, I go. want the names on there. So Julian Lennon, Cheap Trick America, Velvet Revolver, so it has nice, Slash and Duff, nice. and, and the guy that died. Scott, some, not Scott Watts, yeah, Scott Weiland? Scott Weiland. Well, yeah, 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 he's yeah. the one that died. Yeah, yeah, him. That's the Hooters. That's supposedly stage played. Mm -hmm. My sister used to be engaged to the Hooters, the second Hooters bass player, but he was there through all their biggest popularity. Mm -hmm. Like their first bass player, he was in an accident mm -hmm. when they were right before they kind of made it. Mm -hmm. And then this guy, my my sister's ex, I guess she was his fiance. Mm -hmm. I maybe not. Maybe just boyfriend for years. So he was there. So I got to get to see them back in the early days. Mm -hmm. So that's the Hooters, The Fix, Cheap Trick, Squeeze, Cactus and Vanilla Fudge, oh, Carmina Place, Yes, oh. uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Iron Maiden, Kansas, another Styx one. This is like a fedora or whatever you call these things. Britney right. Spears wore bright. <laughs> on stage and autographed. Oh my god. Uh, Cheetah Chrome from the Dead Boys. This was, uh, I forget the name, I keep I, I keep forgetting the name of the band, like a new wave band. They sang that song, The English Beat. This is Motley Crue and Megadeth. No. So there's, oh, there's Dave Mustaine 
And I think Nikki Six is on there. And there's so, the so it started book. just like the little like set list picks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the, then... the set list was on, besides the tour book with Perry Como, which mm -hmm. is very good to have. It's not like everybody has that autographed. Mm -hmm. The set lists were the big thing. The roadies used to pick them up off the stage, crumble them up and throw it down. And one time I picked it up and I creased it all out and I'm like, this is really cool. So I saved it. And then back then, I'd have to write whose guitar pick I got because they didn't have their names on the guitar picks back then. That's how it started. And I just, I'm just, I, I live for music. When I go after something, I'm good at going after it. I'm very manipulative. Set in. And I'm very set in my ways and I know how to act wherever mm -hmm. it calls for you to act this way or that way. Yeah. So that's basically how it all amassed. And then I got in with uh, Skid Row mm -hmm. in like 2001 yeah. and we became friends and I started helping them and then I could do more and more and being with them they gave me the opportunity where anytime I wanted to come just come mm -hmm. like it wasn't like you need to be here then mm -hmm. so I would go with, in jaunts with them yeah. a couple shows here a couple shows there and I like being in that inner circle how many times did you say you've probably seen Skid, Skid Row? Row probably at least a hundred mm -hmm. David Bowie I don't have an exact number, but it's really close to 400. And wow. then Motley Crue, about 100. So they're the three most. Mm -hmm. And I traveled around with Motley Crue, mm -hmm. but just basically followed them. I knew what hotels they were going to stay at. I had front row to the concert every night. I go to the meet and greets. And it gets to be like, oh, there's that kid again. And then yep. they know you. And then being with Skid Row, they kind of all know each other. They're that mm -hmm. kind of Those kind of hair metal bands yeah. and, or hair bands or... You know, a lot of them, they're just because they have hair, they're labeled a hair metal band. Yeah. I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. So, and this was the oldest thing I have was the Perry Como autograph tour book and me picture with them. So that's going to be on the TV show. They're going to feature order. that. And then uh, there's the other Billy Squire. That's when I took her to meet him. God, that's fantastic. Yeah, the framing jobs on these are really good. Yeah, we used to have a lady, an old lady that had like a knit and yarn store across from my old office, mm -hmm. and she made these kind of things. Yeah. So she made a ton of them, and then when our office moved back up here, somebody in Hatboro that's now closed, he made them also. Mm -hmm. Back to the guitars. Poison. Like a couple guys from Fog had a couple guys from Foreigner. It was like... A, a concert on the beach in Atlantic City. So it was like a bunch of bands. The, the lead singer for Foreigner was there, Skid Row was there. Mm -hmm. Slaughter, Queensryche. And I've seen Queensryche a lot, I really like them. And they play with Skid, they play with Skid Row a lot. That's Poison, Quiet Riot. I can't, see, whatever the name is on that pick is who that is. I can't see it on my ground. Slaughter. Grandma. Slaughter, that's yeah. another Slaughter. Jeff Blands? Jeff Blando from Skid Row. Right. So this is, Quiet Riot, Skid Row, Skid Row, Skid Row. Like, I get a guitar <laughs> like that. See that cool looking one? Yeah, the so, like yeah. Rocky Bird stuff. And, uh, and then Firehouse. Yeah. So, that's what it is. So mm -hmm. now it's just I like, go with Skid Row as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And I'm not big on carding guitars to get autographed anymore and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that's basically how all that came to be. Yeah. Um. How like long would you estimate like it's gotten to this kind of like level? You know, when, when did you need to get like a dedicated space for all of this? It know? was. And what was like the the, the deciding factor? Like how, how how many how big was your collection at that point? The, back then, when I I start, I had I didn't have really guitars yet. Like it was mm -hmm. the drumsticks, the set list, the picks pictures with them, something that they, I have a cigarette butt of Steven Tyra's, I have a water bottle, bottle from Dennis DeYoung's sticks, weird little stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I started going to this rock and roll auction and the first got, thing I got was that Smash Nikki Six bass mm -hmm. and I framed it and it says you suck carved in it mm -hmm. and I had it in our dining room. So when you come into the house, that's the first thing you see. Mm -hmm. So we were gonna paint mm -hmm. and my wife said, you can hang anything you want back up, even though there wasn't that much stuff down here and it was just framed stuff on the wall. She mm -hmm. said, please don't hang the You Suck guitar where people first see it when they come. So I <laughs> said, okay. So we painted and I started hanging stuff up and she said, what are you doing? I said, well, we had a deal. You said, she goes, there was no deal. She said, you hang nothing up in this room. So I built an addition and put it all in there and that's when 
the guitar started to snowball. Yeah. Like I really only had one or two of them. Like mm -hmm. I had a Skid Row and a, and a Megadeth one, mm -hmm. and I had uh, somebody gave me as a gift a Julian Lennon one. There you go. And there was so, but I had all my frame stuff and all, so I started doing the room. And then once I got in with Skid Row, mm -hmm. they played with so many of these other bands that I used to like. Mm -hmm. I used to literally come in with a wheelbarrow full of guitars. Mm -hmm. So they started to like build up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was generally of me collecting guitars and doing all that. It's been like 22 years. Wow. I've been doing it. Okay. All right. Uh, That's Judas Priest, Motley Crue. I have a lot of Motley Crue stuff. Oh, yeah. This is from Rocklahoma with like mm. three days worth of bands, Warrant, all that. Twisted Sister, Faster Pussycat, Queensryche, Five for Fighting, Alice Cooper, ABC, the uh, Brian Setzer from the Stray Cats, the mm -hmm. Beach Boys, UK, Did which is know? like Eddie Jobson, and uh, Lou Reed. Yeah, Lou Reed. Oh that God. was from an auction. The Cars. This is just crazy guitars too. Like the, this Ibanez Destroyer. Like the explosion. that was a cool one because I really sweet. liked the Cars, even though Rico Casey was there. It was when they reformed with like Todd Rundgren and mm -hmm. Steve Forbert. That's the stage played apparently Guns N' Roses with everybody but Izzy. Gotcha. But it the, has Gilby Clark and then Dizzy Reed also. The that I got. The or, white one, yeah. And then that's Ted Nugent. Really and a foot pedal fun. by Trevor Trevor Horn from Yes in Asia. Gotcha. And that's the, the Ozzy Osbourne that's microphone. That's the Ozzy Osbourne Osbourne microphone. And uh, Amy Mann, the guys from The Doors with the lead singer from Fuel when they did like a Doors tribute thing. And he, the opening lines to Rock and Roll Suicide, which is an, my favorite Bowie song. And it wasn't like it was a big radio hit, but it I was like, oh, we, so that's that. Gotta have it. And then Al Stewart, uh, Bloister Colt with John Jason Bonham, John Bonham's son, because he was in wow. uh, Bloister Colt at that time. And then these are like, I'll go on a Bowie tour. So these were all the shows, set list pictures. Remember I told you I'd put it together? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they sign, sign the, the glass, glass, so the glass is signed. Plus there's a lot of autographs on the inside, too. So. Because I see him so many times, I take a picture and have him autograph it the next day. There you go. And then when I come home from like four days, I put it all together and... And they're belly with my holding my daughter. Wow. Went backstage at Saturday Night Live. I snuck not only went, got onto the show, I snuck backstage both fucking times. <laughs> Nobody sneaks backstage at Saturday Night Live. I'm sitting in a room with all the cast members and we're watching a basketball game. And all of a sudden, some guy comes in and where they're having a meeting in between the shows. And the guy so just starts talking and look, are you three? And we're like, oh, we're with David Bowie. And they're like, oh, you can't. They were real nice. You can't be in here. So, <laughs> but I'm just, I, I was crazy. So that's, the, and then Bowie in all different cities. And that, did you know? So with the guitars, you have, you said you had a, a friend or something that, that would hook you up with like a lot of like these guitars that right. you bring. Why? There's a lot of people that'll bring like, um, just like a pick guard do a show or something. So, and then put it on the guitar later. I mean, like, I always thought it was cool to have the whole body sign right. and stuff. But, yeah. like, like, the practicality with, like, the sheer volume of, like, signatures you were getting, did you ever think, like, maybe I should switch over to something that would be a little easier that I can stick on the guitar later? The, there's the only time I got pick guards autographed mm -hmm. was one, somebody already gave me one as a gift. Mm -hmm. So that's in a frame. Yeah. And the ones I have. I believe somewhere along the line, I had somebody gave me a bunch of just pick cards. So you just had them. And I just had them, and I didn't feel like running out, getting a guitar, and taking gotcha. it to... So I have like, somewhere in front, I maybe have 10 pick cards, mm -hmm. but it, it got to be where I had pretty much anybody, everybody I wanted on guitar, mm -hmm. but if I really wanted somebody that I was knew I could get, yeah. I would go get another guitar. But there the amount go. of me getting guitar signed in the last five years has really, is it's, really slowed down. Is like I, it, it, you have a ton of like Stratocaster shapes. I mean, is that kind of just like the go-to? Like I'll just get like a Strat style sign, what, or is it just whatever's on hand? Whatever my friend who ran the music store told me I could get for cheapest, mm -hmm. which was usually forty, fifty, sixty bucks. Mm -hmm. I get them. There's been odd ones thrown in there. People leave guitars on consignment. Mm -hmm. I'd spend a little more if I wanted to get a better guitar, a yeah. cooler looking guitar. So, so essentially what you have, it's not necessarily the coolest 
guitar collection, but it's the coolest signature collection yes, with the best framing it's, on a guitar. It's all about the signatures. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the guitar looks like. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's all about the signatures. Gotcha, gotcha. So, like, let me get the guitar signed. Yeah, like, I yeah, like that. When I got that Nikki Six guitar, the first one, Jeez. I just thought it was really cool. And like I said before to you, when we went to Larry Maggot's office to pick up that microphone, mm -hmm. he had all those guitars on the wall. Paul McCartney, Pete Townsend, Mick Jagger, like mm -hmm. all just lined, and I was like, "This That's is what coolest. I want to do," because I had just got the Motley Crue guitar, mm -hmm. so I had one guitar, and I'm like. But that's where I got like, the let's, idea. Let's just keep it yeah, going. Yeah, like uh -huh. I don't play guitar. I, I All I know is that I can get the guitar and I want it autographed. And I want you to sign it big. You don't need to make it teeny. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so it, it's all about the autograph. Yeah, excellent. Over here is Green Day and Angel. Tesla, LA Guns. Skid Row. All my Skid Rows have been are acoustic or stage played. Wow. A band called Down, because he was also the tour manager of this band, and he and it's like a there's some guys from Pantera and some guys yeah. from Rage Against the Machine or yeah, something that like that. Sounds about right. And yeah. I know that main guy was there, Rex somebody. So. Is that Rex Brown? Yeah, it was yeah. like a good picture and photo opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I'm like a little groupie. And Ultravox, Buck Cherry, Lena Ford, The Runaways, except for two of them, but the main three are on there. Uh, Gary Newman, oh Skid God. Row. <laughs> this is a Black Star Riders, who's basically Thin Lizzy. So can I ask, like, um, are these just like, uh, are, are, so it's, a lot of them are stage played, like they No, not a lot of them are so stage played. This are these just guitars played. you would pick up to get some? Yeah, I had a friend that was the manager at Happer Music, and oh, he would give me the cheap guitars for 40, 50 bucks a piece. And, I, just like and yet, I don't care about, it doesn't need to be some vintage $20,000 mm -hmm. wretch, you know, some kind of, all I care about is the autograph. Yeah. If so, and he, they also had people that left guitars there on consignment. And if people, if if I saw a band that I wanted to have a cooler guitar, mm -hmm. like Motley Crue, I yeah. didn't want to bring one of these. Poison, yeah. I didn't want to. So I would buy a cool looking like rocker guitar mm -hmm. and still get them for like these really good prices. And then at Christmas online, like say George's Music, buy two guitars, get two free. That mm -hmm. and they're only fifty bucks. So I'll get yeah. them like that, but I don't really buy that many guitars. I, I, I bought like four a couple of years ago to stock up mm -hmm. for around Christmas because of the sale. Yeah. And I just think I used the last one. Like I don't do it as much as I used to. Because a lot of, there's sometimes I don't have somebody from a band on a guitar. Yeah. So I can take that same guitar again. It, it all depends. And then, but a lot of, most of them are not stage played. A certain amount of them I got from auctions. That's when I first started collecting. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I'm going to go broke this way. So I knew the band schedules. I have the guitar cheap and I go and I wait for it or follow them or sneak in somewhere mm -hmm. or like I'm just good at what I did <laughs> and then uh, like you were saying like the, the whole like kind of professional soccer yeah, thing. Yeah, I man. was crazy. <laughs> I, I really was. And uh, and that's Uriah Heap, because the original bass oh, player shit. was a spider. He's oh. like a spider from Mars, so I had to get that. That's fucking awesome. Yes, this um, is a <laughs> the, the pickup pole and the... <laughs> that is a crazy guitar. I fucking love Uriah Heap, that's amazing. Yeah, they're, they're, they, I mean, there was only like two or, th I guess there was two guys, but it was two originals and the singer was there. I just, and I that, love that they just like, <laughs> just, you know, yeah, cut it out, throw a pickup in it. That's awesome. So to be honest with you, I guess I would have had to. This, this my friend would have. I bought this guitar for my friend. I guess I sometimes after he stopped working there, I'd call and say I need another guitar, and he'd show up with one. Oh and God. like I, that had to be one of them because there's no way that I they get, I got a guitar from them. So, okay. And then that's like from the Rocklahoma, like Stephen Adler, the Bullet Boys. Uh, uh, they, they're just like the B bands that were on the first day. Gotcha. And like with all the, the smaller memorabilia and stuff, I mean, like this kind of all started when you were a kid. When did it 
like it did it, did it kind of consistently grow over time yes. or was there just like like spikes of activity in that club? The more things I went to, the more stuff I got. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you would go see David Bowie four nights a week for like three months. Yeah, how the hell did you pull that off? You, you, know? you accumulate set list guitar picks. You ran into them pictures because I know when they're going to mm -hmm. do, do the sound checks. So then maybe they, I get more, but it's more of like kind of the same stuff I already have. It's from day one, it's never stopped with any little thing like a guitar pick or a set list or a drumstick or, you know, that's been continuous from day one. That's where it started and that's the way it's always been. Gotcha. Is this anything like, you know, you have enough here basically for like a private museum. Have you ever like loaned out any instruments or anything for like, you know, like display anywhere my there was uh there was a promoter called bill graham from mm -hmm. san francisco mm -hmm. and the, isn't he like the bill graham civic center yes. is that his venue yeah and the and the uh fillmore west and the fillmore east that he started all that he's mm -hmm. and what happened was that there was an there was an exhibit that phil graham's from he's jewish mm -hmm. and his parents were like holocaust survivors ah. so they had an exhibit on Holocaust survivors, something that tied in with a rock star, with a with a music. So it, this exhibit was on Bill Graham, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His collection of his stuff, and he's got this stage worn Janis Joplin outfit from mm -hmm. Monterey Pop. He's got Jimi Hendrix's burned guitar. He's got you know this is Bill Graham. In my world, is the bit one of the biggest of the big. Mm -hmm. So. They had this exhibit. It started out in San Francisco with the at the Jewish Museum. Mm -hmm. Then it was coming to Philadelphia at the American at the National American Jewish Museum. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know the per, I was in the newspaper. The person that wrote the article on me is friends with the main people at the museum. Mm -hmm. When Bill Graham's exhibit was coming here, they wanted to find a way to tie in Bill Graham to Philadelphia. Well, Bill Graham promoted Live Aid. And I have the stage used Ozzy Osbourne microphone from when he did the set with Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I have that autographed. I have a guitar. I have a pick guard autographed by David Bowie and Mick Jagger mm -hmm. from when they filmed Dancing in the Streets for to benefit oh Live God. Aid. And then I have, uh, so they, they, the curator from the museum called me. He came out here with his partner and they, I showed them all my Live Aid stuff and they picked out five items because they said they only needed a, they, they had a space to fill. Mm -hmm. And I was honored enough just to be in it. Mm -hmm. So I, they, I lent them my thing for the run of the exhibit. So it was like three months. Mm -hmm. So my, it was in the American, the National American Jewish Museum was my exhibit. And then when that was over, the exhibit went to Chicago at the Holocaust Museum. Yeah. So they called me, can we borrow your stuff? So they borrowed the stuff. So the, the collection's been at two museums. Mm -hmm. It's been in the newspaper article. Mm -hmm. The TV news has come here like the day David Bowie died. Mm -hmm. They knew there's some kid in Horsham that has this enormous David Bowie collection. So they came here and they did an interview for that. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to be on a TV show. Gotcha. So the recognition from something that was just my hobby. It's just been outstanding. Yeah, like literally my dad told me one day, either get your job and cut your hair or be a rock star. Mm -hmm. So this was as close as I could get to being that rock star. It's fair enough. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of my whole life in the music in a just, in a nutshell. Just being being a huge fan. Yeah, of, of, I, I mean, I love music. Yeah. You know, I sense. just, a lot of these songs, like, I don't want to be cliche, but like, I don't want to say they're the, they're the words to my life, but I can relate to like, so some songs, like it really has an impact and yeah. I'm just passionate about the music and like, collection this is just this is what you do yeah you know, this is your your ammo yeah <laughs> well thank you so much for showing me everything this has been amazing is there anything else that you would like want to is there anything that you haven't like shown or like stuff that you know people don't ask about as much that you like would be excited to tell people about but it just doesn't come up you know what off the top of my head now there's like everything i have the I, bases are covered somehow i you know somehow i have a bad memory but mm -hmm. i can remember each item that night where they came from how mm -hmm. i got them so there's like so many stories that i haven't got to i guess over all these years mm -hmm. but there's none where i go wow i really wish i could tell this story mm -hmm. you know it's like it's it's kind of it was just a passion of mine and i've 
been telling different stories for so many years now that mm -hmm. I can't think off the top of my head there's anything I want to say. But I appreciate your interest. I'm always yeah. humbled that something I do as a hobby is an interest to somebody like you. And uh, I appreciate you coming here and enjoying it. Yeah. No, I, I, I really i am stoked you let us in to, to show you know everything off. It's and excellent. It's on, man. Yeah. No, thank you so much again.